Did you know that you could write music, orchestrate, arrange completely for free? You have access to a great resource here. This is a technology that is developing very quickly. And in the past five years, I have seen so many improvements 30 years ago when these online notation softwares, they were just not an option unless you were shelling out incredible amounts of money. And even at that, they weren't very good. So uh, let's jump right into it here. The first thing that you're going to want to do is find this software here called MuseScore, free music composition notation software. It has gotten some updates in the past few years that have made it competitive with other really, really good notation softwares. Over here you see Sibelius looking at us. Um, and some of you out there are probably Finale fanatics. Uh, for those of you who might be like, oh, why are you using this, this kid's software or something like that? This is a wonderful software that is really becoming competitive nowadays. And so if you have not gotten this for yourself, come over here, MuseScore, free music composition and notation software. Click there. You have your free download right here. One of the first things you're going to be greeted with when you download MuseScore is going to be what they call the Muse Hub over here. And this is where you're going to download the really high quality instrument sound effects, especially the orchestral sounds. In my opinion, they're some of the best. And you even see here they have choir sounds that are, that are pretty good. They take some tweaking in the settings to make them sound really great, but they're very, very good. The other interesting thing is I don't know why they don't just download them for you right away. So you're going to have to just come over here and you'll click. I already have them downloaded, but you'll just click on these and it'll, it'll, they'll have a, I think it says get or install or something like that. And you'll click on them. It downloads them and imports them for you. There's no extra work or going to any other files, nothing like that. Uh, you could also go to the sounds tab here and they have all of them here. They have keys, brass, strings, choir, percussion, harp, and woodwinds. And some of them are just incredible. So once you've got those downloaded, you'll just need to start a new piece. This is up to you, completely up to you. I, I suggest starting with, with just arrangements, things that you really enjoy that maybe haven't been orchestrated before or haven't been arranged for, I don't know, string quartet or whatever you feel your expertise in music is. But to, for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna show you how to lay out a good foundation for an orchestra score to get all of the best use out of Muse score. So let's try it out. You'll click on new score over here and you'll be greeted with a whole instruments page. I'm going to just add what I typically will add. So you'll want a flute. And so even within this, you can go in and edit later and then change so you can have flute one and two, and then you can end up splitting this one line into a two voice part. So you'll do the same with other things as well. So let's take oboe. We could do that with clarinet. You might want to add two because you'll have one, clarinets one and two, and then you'll have three and four. Let's add a bass clarinet just for the fun of it. I'm going to do bassoon. Now, here's an interesting thing. This is a good tip for you. If you're this far and you're like, well, I want a contrabassoon, but I don't see a contrabassoon here. Well, we'll handle the sound effect later, but let's just put in another bassoon. Uh, but this will end up being our contrabassoon. So that covers our woodwinds for right now. I'm satisfied with that for a just standard orchestra setting. Now we come to brass. I'll add French horns and I'll, I'll do two sets of them similar to what we did with clarinet. Trumpet. You could do the same with that if you wanted, but I'm not going to. Trombone. Uh, and then we could just do tuba. I don't know why it says unspecified, but uh, this also has a great bass trombone sound effect, too. So if you want to have a really beefy bass section, click tuba again. And just like we did with bassoon up here, we're going to turn that into a contra bassoon. We're going to turn this into a bass trombone later on. Percussion. You have your pitched percussion. So these are the ones that produce a pitch, obviously. Timpani, which is one of the huge ones that I love in, in an orchestra setting. So I'm going to add timpani. Uh, I really like glockenspiel. I, I love all of these, to be honest with you, but glockenspiel is a good safe bet. Adds a nice little high-pitched bell quality. Now we come over here to the unpitched percussion. These are all the things that just go boom. Uh, we have a bass drum here. I love bass drums. Let's add him. Concert snare. Now you have cymbal. Now here's another good tip for you that I'll tell you. 
add symbol and say you want a symbol that crashes and then you also want the suspended symbol that you could do nice rolls on with mallets if you want that you'll add symbol twice here let's just do it for the sake of it and i could go into the settings later change him to suspended symbol him to crash symbol and that will make perfect sense so that that covers what i want to do there keyboards you can add harpsichord piano organ pipe organ whatever you want i'm gonna i really like orchestrations that have a little piano part just whispering along in the background a nice little percussive piano sound effect going on back there now strings it says plucked and bowed that's just the difference between like uh, acoustic guitars and then your strings of course that you pull a bow across so here we're going to select violin and you could do it by section it doesn't really matter because all that matters is what you're going to end up putting into the audio mixer later on. Whatever you end up inserting in that slot is going to be the sound effect. So we'll kind of get to it later. I just like to click on normal violin, not the section, and we'll figure that part out later. So uh, I'll do violin, viola, cello, and contra bass. But that, that really covers all of our basses here, have all of our instruments, our full orchestra. So you'll click... Uh, next so I almost clicked done there and made a mistake uh, but click next instead because then you'll have some more options whatever it is you're arranging you're gonna want to find out what key it's in uh, just for the sake of of being different I'm gonna be F major here uh, let's put it in I don't know what do we like you like 12 8 don't you I bet you do you're that kind of person uh, and now we're going on <laughs> here uh, so if you wanted to show the tempo marking right at the beginning of the score, you have the option. Let's do a nice, oh, well, it'd be dotted quarter, wouldn't it? Because we're doing this 12-8 number. Uh, I don't know. Let's do 80. I don't know. That might be crazy, but we're going to do it. Uh, and now here's another thing. Just for the sake of making it look nice and clean, it, it initially starts you out with 32 measures, which with all of these instruments we've added is going to take up a lot of space so i'll just go put a five there just give me five measures if you wanted to create a pickup you could do that here but we could also do that later on that's the really nice thing about MuseScore. score if you forget to do something right now there's always a way to very easily fix it later uh, title of our score is new score how original um, if you wanted to add a subtitle if there's a lyricist, you can write that here, or if it's arranged by, you could do that. So we're going to leave all that blank, and now all we have is done. So when we click that, let's see what we get here. So this is a great thing about MuseScore. Right away, it's already put so many of our instruments where they need to be. Flutes are, are at the top. We have clarinets with a bracket connecting them, bassoons with a bracket connecting them. All this wonderful stuff already done. It already looks pretty presentable, and I haven't really done anything a few quick things i want to tell you right away is i like to get all the details of the score figured out first so i like to go through and get all of the visual elements just taken care of so when you're writing your music you're not worried about having to go back and fix other things at the start of the score just get it all figured out right here some of those things would include let's do this click on so staff or part properties you're gonna to have to do a lot of this at the start now you'll get this window, long instrument name. So this is what's showing up right here. And now on later pages, you can have it where it tells you that this top line is always flute, or you can have it just say FL period, or you can delete it all together. And now it doesn't say anything. So I'm gonna keep it as it was, cause this one's fine. But what I might add is, so then we'll get this look. So now it's very clear instruments one and two oboe will be by itself it says clarinet one and b flat there's nothing wrong with that but let's go to staff or part properties and there we are so now we have just b flat clarinet one instead so you can go through and adjust all these as you need so like we said here bassoon one we're going to come in we've now made a difference between our bassoon and our contra bassoon part here and so you'll want to go down and do this with all of your instruments. Just make it look exactly as you want. So if I wanted to add like violins one and two, you see that we have instruments in different keys here. Come down here in this bottom right corner. It says concert pitch has a little tuning fork. I'm going to click it. Now every instrument is transposed. Concert F here and I'll write a concert F in the flute as well. And now if I click on concert pitch, it has now properly transposed 
my clarinet to the right note there. So that is a really clever thing as well. Another thing, the format of your score, when you're writing for inst this many instruments, I don't really even worry about the formatting until the end. I just want to get the music sounding the way I want. So how I do that is I get page view over here in the corner right next to concert pitch and then do continuous view horizontal. And so now let me add a bunch of measures and you'll see what I mean. Uh, so now you see it just stretches all this right across the page. There's no page breaks, nothing like that I have to worry about. All right, now here we are on a score that I have done a lot of editing on. I still have a lot more to do, so please don't be too critical here. Now to change these fonts, very easy as well. You come up here to Format, come over to Style, and it's the very last one here, Text Styles. You're going to come to this place a lot just to fix everything, get everything looking just how you want. So you come through here, you make every adjustment you need, whether it's your text or your measure numbers, everything you need. Any, however you want the, the letters to look on the page, the words to look on the page, you can find all of it right here. Very simple. And when you're done, you just click OK. Now that you've got your score open, you've started your arrangement, you have all of your instruments labeled correctly, the very last thing you're going to want to do before you start putting all the notes down is come over here to this mixer. It's, it's right at the top of the page at all times. I like that they've put it up here because you use it so often. Here is the key. I know this looks really chaotic. Uh, but when you start out, let's go back to our other score and see how that starts out. So you're going to come up here to your mixer, and you look, and so everything is pretty basic starting out. It gives you, a lot of your stuff is actually put in properly, but some of it you might want to go through. And let me just tell you some of my quick takes. Flute 1 is a great sound. The oboe 1 is great. Clarinet and B flat is great. Bass clarinet bassoon. Now here is our first thing. Our second bassoon was going to be a contra bassoon. So I'm going to come in here, go down to Muse Sounds. This is the wonderful sound effects that we just downloaded. We're going to come down to Woodwinds and now bassoon. We're going to find contra bassoon. There we have it. Now here's where it gets tricky. By default, Muse Score loves to give you horn in F, so just one horn, but we're writing for orchestra. We want many horns to sound. So so I'm going to come to Muse Br Brass and it says horns A6. I really don't know why they left the numbers after. I don't know if it means there are six of them. I'm not exactly sure. But this is just the group of horns playing instead of just a singular solo French horn. Uh, trombones, they do the same thing. A lot of the brass, they just kind of make it the solo version. But you're going to want to make it the trombones A3, then tuba. And now here where it says tuba 2, which I, I, you know, we will fix that to say bass trombone, but let's come over here. Bass trombone, there he is, right on the top. So now this line will play. So together they... Just gives this really nice full sound to your bass section. Um, timpani is set right. Glockenspiel, just right. Bass drum, just right. Snare, all the good things. Pi piatti? Piatti? Anyway, uh, I guess that means crash cymbal because that's what that is. Anytime you see this, uh, it just means it's your crash cymbal. So we wanted to make one a crash cymbal and one a suspended cymbal. So the way we would do that is, so we have crash cymbal one and then cymbal two, we're going to make our suspended. So we come over, percussion, and then suspended symbol. There it is. S U S symbol. Sus symbol. Grand piano. That's pretty much the best sound effect that that they have built in with that. So now here we have the same problem we had with the brass section. Our violins, violas, and our all of our string section is the solo version. And then contra basses. I don't know for the life of me why they do this, but M S basic. That's Muse Score basic. So if we didn't download any of those new sounds, it would just stick you with a, a one of the basic older sounds that they used to have. I'm going to go into violins, and then I'm going to go to string, and then I don't want violin solo. I want just violins. There are two selections here, so if you split them up into violins one and two, but I'm going to just do violins one, come back over, viola. I'm going to switch it to violas, and then instead of just one cello, we're going to have a whole bunch of them, and then here we go. Muse score basic is you're going to want to come over here. Muse sounds, go down to strings, Contra basses. There we go. Like why it wasn't set like that to begin with, I don't know. Now the last thing you're going to want to do on the mixer before you go on and write your beautiful music is going to be this little knob you see in the middle. You're going to want to adjust the panning angle. So this is how far out of your left ear or your right ear the sound's going to come uh, because all of the orchestral recordings that you listen to 
a lot of times there are many microphones set up all over the place and they're in stereo so you're hearing just different sound effects from one ear to the other and it it's part of what makes a really really good live sounding recording so here is my little trick for that this is an old school handwritten um, layout for an orchestra this is like a seating chart that uh, orchestra conductor would have but i've tried to translate this into all of the panning angles so that you get sort of an interesting sound that's similar to what the conductor would experience, similar to what I assume they're going with on orchestral recordings. So here, I, you see, I've, I've made lots of changes. So my flutes, it might not be following this because this is just a starting point. And then you go from this to uh, see what sound effects you like. So you see that zero degree angle right here, right down the middle. So whatever instruments you want to come straight at you, like they're sounding like they're straight in the middle, it's going to be on this zero degree here. I only have a few people on that. That's really one of my only warnings to use, just to make sure that your bass voices are, are fairly centralized. So it's not like you just hear an only bass come out of your right ear or something like that. I've made the flutes off to the left a little bit. Oboe, I have right off to the other side. So I try to do 20 and 20 to complement that. 20 to the left, 20 to the right. I do that with the clarinets. They're a little off to my left, a little off to the right. So now when the clarinet section plays, it's giving extra depth to it that I'm hearing different sounds from left than I am from right. And I would assume my violins are very far off to the left. Yes, they're all the way 40 to the left and my cellos are 40 to the right. My rule is typically not to exceed 35 degrees here, but you see that I broke my own rule very quickly. So, you know, it just depends on what you like. I hope that you join me again as I talk more about the details of orchestration. This was just Hey, go download MuseScore, and here's how to set up your file so you're going to be successful with your arranging and orchestrating. But let's take a nice listen, and I'll see you in the next episode.